Hey, how's it going today? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad, thanks. You were uh, named Conference USA Player of the Week yesterday. What What does that mean to you? Uh, just a, a great feeling um, and just the, and just trusting the process. Um, I give out a credit to Coach Lonnie, Coach Trailer, uh, the old line and everybody else. Uh, like I always say, uh, they deserve all the credit. Um, I get too much of the credit, um, but they do all the dirty work and I just get the glory. So, but it's just a blessing to go out there and play. Um, I was looking at my, my memories and uh, like two years ago, around this time I was injured. So just going out there and playing the game I love, I can't take it for granted. I cherish every moment of it. Did it, it felt like you guys wanted to pass more a little bit in this last game, at least in the beginning. Is that, is that kind of what the game plan was? Yeah, because they loaded the box a lot more. Um, of course, Lonnie does a great job of kind of keeping it a um, little bit of both. And he, I know he wanted to do it more on first down, keep them guessing. Uh, it was m much more of the game plan. Uh, we took a lot of more shots down the field. They know Lonnie did a great job of blocking. Uh, we got to clean up a little, little bit of protection. But uh, at the end of the day, I think we did uh, pretty good throwing the ball down the field. What did you think of the atmosphere? It was kind of is kind of quiet in there. Uh, to play like that, kind of broke out on me. But uh, I think you kind of said how was the atmosphere. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I understand it's the pandemic, so uh, everybody could be more spread out, and not that many people are gonna go. It's kind of quiet at times, uh, but like Coach said, we got to bring our own juice on the sideline, uh, just get motivated by ourselves. Uh, but we appreciate all the fans that came out, and uh, we understand that some fans don't want to come out because of the pandemic, uh, but we just appreciate the, the support, and uh, just come out again Friday and get it rocking. Hey, Greg, you're up. Frank, how is this week of preparation being a, a short week against a new opponent? different from normal? Um, it's really no difference. They're in the same boat. So, you know, we got to go out there and prepare. Um, really didn't have an off day because we had to turn back around quick, but uh, there's no excuses in that in that matter. Uh, so we just got to go out there and prepare like we've been doing, uh, keep watching film, and uh, just be ready to play on Friday. Memphis was going to be obviously a very tough opponent. They're a defending conference champion and a, and a ranked team. Is that a test you guys were looking forward to, or how did you kind of view that game before it got canceled? Yeah, it was a test. Uh, we got a few tests this year. Uh, Middle Tennessee is uh, not a letdown. Uh, they're a great team as well. Uh, so we just got to go out there and execute. We can't have too many mistakes like we've been having. I'm not saying other teams were not as good, but uh, we got to go out there and execute, at least on offense. Uh, we can't have too many uh, – DBOs, and we got to just keep purging that. Uh, just go out there and keep getting better every day at practice. Does it mean anything that this is a conference game to you guys? Does that change the approach or the mindset at all? Um, coach addressed it once, but it's not really about the opposing team. It's just, uh, we got to go out there every day and 1 0, and we got to win the day for ourselves. So we got to just take care of what we can take care of and just keep getting better every day and striving for greatness and just stacking little, little wins on top of each other. and. Like I said, just win the day. I want to ask about Josh Cephas. He's become kind of a, a primary target for you. What has he brought to the office, how, offense? How have you felt about how he's played through these first couple weeks? Uh, if you watch him play, he plays with a motor. He's very unselfish. He strains when he blocks, and he blocks. Uh, like all my receivers, all my receivers, I give him credit. They all block, uh, even when they're not getting the ball, which is pretty impressive. Um, but he's a, he's, a great, he's a great guy. Great teammate. Uh, he's a he's a very good leader. He's very vocal. Uh, he leads the receiving group along with a lot a lot of other people. Um, but I trust him just like I trust all my other receivers. So uh, whenever whenever I get a chance to put the ball in his hands, I try to. Do you see any differences in him that he's been more productive compared to last year? He matured a lot uh, since last year. Uh, I trust him a lot more. I, I I would say that just because getting repetition and getting reps with him. Um, He's been proving himself all through camp, all through everything, learning the playbook, uh, running his routes, catching the ball, and just, just being a leader and getting to his teammates and just leading by example. Uh, but, yeah, he's, he's doing a, he was doing a great job, but we still got some work to do. Hey, Hector. Hey, Frank, good morning. Good morning, sir. 
uh, Coach Lenny talked about uh, wanting more balance uh, in this week two game against SFA, you know, running and passing. You know, you talked with, uh, with JJ about uh, kind of a concerted effort to throw the ball more. When you're out there and, and you go in with the game plan, uh, how, how often do you communicate or do you with Coach Lenny and Coach Trailer in terms of what you're seeing out there in terms of the balance and, hey, let's do this and this would work and et cetera, et cetera? Uh, well, when I come off to the sideline, I have Coach Davis on there. Um, he's talking through a headset to Coach Lenny, who's in the booth. And uh, just kind of, he's kind of like a middleman. Uh, sometimes I get on the headset and talk to Coach Lenny, but for the most part, Coach Lenny's let me go out there and play uh, with no stress, not too much. Uh, me and Coach Davis talk about uh, what I've been seeing and uh, what's been going on out there. And the other quarterbacks, uh, Lowell, Josh, JoJo, uh, they, they, look, they all got an assignment to look at different stuff. So when I come to the sideline, they tell me what covers they were in and what they saw. So uh, those guys all helped me out uh, to just really get me, get me going and, uh, and get me seeing the defense in a better perspective. Uh, so it slows the game down a lot. And those guys, they deserve a lot of credit for what they do because, they, I mean, they could be bitter about the whole situation, but it takes a lot for them to do what they do. So I appreciate them. Is it fair to ask, Frank, if at this point of your career, uh, game in and game out, you're still seeing a lot of things that maybe you hadn't seen before and, and possession or whether it's a possession or a quarter or a half, whatever you come out of there thinking, wow, I hadn't seen that before. I know this now. I know that now. I mean, is, is it fair to ask if it's just a continuation of, of the process of playing quarterback? Yeah, I would, I would say that uh, just like on Saturday, I left a few plays out on the field. Uh, just little things like that. I could have done better. Of, uh, everybody could do better. Uh, and I'm, I'm really hard on myself. So when I come off on the sideline, sometimes I know I did some things that I wish I could get back, like throwing the pick. Um, I wish I would have just got rid of it a little faster so that I didn't get hit to, to where it didn't kind of affect what happened. Uh, just stuff like that. I know I threw a few passes uh, that were in jeopardy. Uh, luckily, they weren't intercepted. Um, just little things like that, yeah, I wish I could have them back. But it's just, it's just a growing process. Uh, still at the beginning of the year. And I just got to keep getting better and keep grinding and keep trusting Coach Lenny and uh, trusting everybody else and watching film. You mentioned the, 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 how you cherish the chance to play now because of what you've been through the last, the last several years. Um, I imagine when you're out there, it, it, it gives you a different perspective than maybe, you know, I, I know it's tough to if and, and 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 but or whatever, but, you know, as opposed to let's say the injury never happens last year or the injuries before that don't happen. Is it, do you look at yourself and think there's no way I have the perspective I have now if those things don't happen to me beforehand? Of course. Uh, who, would, who would have ever known I would have got hurt at practice? Uh, we just had a, probably the week before that, we had a live scrimmage. I didn't get hurt. Then uh, I got hurt at practice with a red jersey on. Nobody touched me. Uh, season in the injury, tear my right ACL. Just stuff like that really don't take it in perspective. You kind of take practice for granted. Uh, so now every day I try to go out there uh, with a smile on my face. Before I go to practice, I pray, and after I pray. Uh, just stuff like that, you know, you just take it for granted. I would have never guessed I would have got hurt at practice, knowing that I don't get touched at practice. So you got a whole different perspective of that. So it's a, actually a blessing in the skies that it happened, just so God gave another view of the game that I love and how it could be taken away at any moment. Yesterday, Sticks uh, spoke pretty passionately about the top 25 and how to him uh, really essentially it didn't mean much um, as, as a, a leader on the team as well. What's your message to the team, Frank, about that when the top 25 votes, um, when it does come up with your team? And I don't even know if it comes up all that often besides that, that initial conversation with coach trailer, if you can maybe speak to that, how often it may, it, it may, it maybe has come up this week and what your approach is when it does come up. No, nah, I really don't get brought up um, a few weeks ago. Who was number 75 out of 76 teams. You know, a lot of people doubted us. So uh, you can't forget where you started from. And that's where we started from. So even though we're getting the recognition that, you know, we rightfully deserve, uh, you, can't, you, you can't really buy into all that. We got to just go out there every day and just keep competing. If you keep getting bought, bought into all that stuff, you got to go out there and execute. So we just try not to really pay attention to all that uh, and just stay within our team and just cherish one another as you go out there and play the game. Thank you, Frank. Yes, sir, thank you. Hey, Greg, close us out with Frank here.
Greg, I just want to ask what it's been like to see Tariq Wollin go from being one of your receiving targets to now playing on the other side of the ball and, and how you've seen that transition play out for him from your perspective. Uh, Rick is doing a, a phenomenal job um, transitioning from receiver to, to corner, especially how tall and lanky he is. Uh, his determination, I remember I asked him, like, hey, bro, like, we got new coaches, like, come play receiver again. No. I was, okay. So just his drive and his, his, his willingness to, to learn the technique and everything in the, in the corner position, it just shows a lot about him. And now he wants to transform his style of play into a cornerback. Uh, and it takes a lot. This is his first year playing cornerback. And he's to me, he's doing a phenomenal job of, of learning everything. Coach Graham's doing a great job of teaching him and comprehending to what he, he knows. So I, I give a lot of credit to Reap just for just going in and, and, and learning this position within a short amount of time and going out there and playing like he's been playing. Did you know he could make some of these hits he's been playing? He's been, I think that's been a surprise for some of us how physical he's been. Oh, we, yeah, we, we get down there, he'll, he'll hit you. Uh, I think Coach kind of got him on edge when he kind of called him out, uh, saying that he, he wouldn't hit. So I think I kind of turned him up a notch, uh, which is good, because uh, we, we has, he has it in him. Uh, just we got to just keep on building them up, and he's going to keep making plays for us on the defensive side. Thank you, Frank. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Frank. We'll get Coach in there next. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, Frank. Hey, Coach, can you give a 10 count real quick? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> All right, we'll take questions hey, for Coach Taylor. You, JJ, you're up first. Jeff, oh, Coach, could you scoot to the left real quick? Jeff, what, okay. can you what can you tell us about Middle Tennessee? Uh, they're aggressive on defense. Uh, tons of different pressure packages. Uh, very scrappy. You get after your group. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're everywhere. We got a lot prepared for. Uh, offensively, they run a lot of stuff, too. They do a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of schemes, a lot of plays. And uh, we got – a short week to get ready for a lot of stuff. How would you say your offensive line played this past week? I love my guys and uh, I appreciate them, but it was not to our standard for sure. Was that just a function of the opponent or is there some stuff you guys have to clean up? Both. It's the first time we've seen a four down front. You know, we're an odd, Texas State's a version of an odd. Uh, so that was tough on the guys. Uh, SFA's personnel was good. Uh, they had good players up there, and we didn't play very well. And uh, we were smelling ourselves, and we ate the cheese. And we, we didn't get better from week one to week two, which is not usual. Usually you get your most improvement during those two weeks, and we took a step backwards. So uh, we really challenged the guys this week, and so far every group or person I've challenged has really responded the next week, and I expect our line to respond this week as well. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, Greg. Jeff, I think you said yesterday uh, you'd be getting the update on uh, Dadrian Taylor and Brendan Brady. Is there anything you can share with those two guys? Um, yeah, day day will be day to day. That's, that worked out pretty good. I like that. <laughs> And, and Brendan's going to be out uh, a little bit longer than that, we're afraid. And I'm curious about the, the COVID testing this week, given that it's an unusual week with the Friday game. How is it structured, and how did you come through the first round? We're on a streak right now, Gray. We've gone seven in a row where we're 100%. So it's, it's every 
100 days of blessing. We tested yesterday, and uh, we'll test tomorrow, and we'll test uh, Thursday. Okay, Hector, you're up. Hey, Coach, good morning. Good morning, Hector. Is it fair to ask, Coach, if upon taking the job, one of the first players you looked at was or looked into uh, kind of studied up on was was Frank Harris, you know, be, because of his stature, local kid, he'd, he'd suffered the injuries, uh, you know, highly recruited, relatively speaking, out of, out of high school. Is it fair to ask that, Coach, or, or fair to say that? I didn't. I, uh, I didn't treat any of them differently. Uh, I didn't want any preconceived ideas. Uh, obviously, everybody offered me their opinions, and I just basically – said yes sir and no sir or yes ma'am and no ma'am and really wasn't listening to anybody because uh, I wanted to make my own opinions and I watch everything I watch which one of my kids when they're walking across the street to the practice field lets cars go by and which ones don't let them go by I watch I just watch little bitty things on people uh, I love the people watch I love to learn about people what makes their minds tick and uh, Frank Harris has a pure soul he has a pure heart. Uh, he has a great mind. Uh, he's just a, a, an answered prayer. Now, where else I got a blessing was Lowell Narcisse is a wonderful human. And Jojo Weeks is a wonderful human. And Josh Atkins is a wonderful human. Those are four of the best dudes you'll ever coach in your entire life. And uh, they truly love each other and get along with each other. And uh, You talk about an answered prayer for a first time head coach in college to get four quarterbacks with those good people that they're all a blessing. Yeah, Frank, Frank did the same things about the other three quarterbacks when he's talking about in-game adjustments and, and observations and how help they help him out as well. Uh, the reason I was asking the previous question, Coach, is I was just curious, you, you know, whether it was preconceived notions, which you obviously just clearly laid out that there were none. If, there, if you could speak to growth, that you might have seen in Frank from the moment you got here and the moment you you got to meet him to now, and I know it's a tough question because you've only you've known him for less than a year, and and then under these most uh, unique of circumstances where there wasn't spring ball. But if you've seen whatever it might be a difference in Frank from day one to where he is right now, the biggest thing I would say about that is from the moment I ever spoke to him, I always felt like he believed in me for some reason. Uh, just by the look in his eye, uh, the bounce in his step, there was something about Frank that just I could tell he believed in me, um, which belief is a strong thing. And that's where it starts. And uh, that's that's what I would say. He, his, he believes in the words I tell him, and he goes out there and, and leads that. And... Uh, He's a, he's a true leader. And uh, if anything, I think what I've helped him with is maybe a couple of things is just don't beat himself up so much. Go play, man. Have fun. You're the best athlete on the field. Go be the best athlete on the football field. Uh, and I think I've helped him you know, get out and don't take hits. We'll live to see another day. Get out of bounds. You know, and just that's, that's it. I don't – he believes in me. I believe in him. But I wouldn't put a player out there. When I put Lowell out there, the low zone, I'm taking one of the best athletes off the football field. That shows you how much I believe in Lowell when I put him out there. So I believe in all my kids. I don't want to make this the Frank show, but since you asked about Frank, I answered the question. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Hey, Greg, back to you. Jeff, what has uh, Joshua Cephas done to sort of emerge as the number one target through these first couple games? What stands out about his play so far? Just how much he's grown up off the field. I mean, he's really matured off the field, which has affected his on the field. Uh, he, he takes the field with a purpose. Now, speaking of that, you know, I we have a policy. You got you got to take the field with energy and juice. And I guess I, I got caught lollygagging today, and Frank Frank called me out, and made me. I had to go back outside the gate, come back out on the field. So can't get away with anything with Frank. If I don't have the right color socks, or if I'm not Adidas out, Frank Frank doesn't miss it. I'll be back to Josh. Uh, Josh has just matured so much. Uh, he's he's as good without the ball now as he was with the ball. He's always been good with the ball. Uh, but it's very the analogy to basketball. 
what, what do you like without the ball? I mean, how well do you rebound? How about do you block out? How well do you set screens? Well, you can take the football analogy the same way. It's easy to play football when you're getting the ball. What do you do when you're not getting the ball? Ball's away, backside cutoff angle, you're a wide receiver. Ball's coming right behind you. You got to block it up. Those kind of things let you know about a player. And if you watch Josh, man, he's into it. And all those receivers are. Every one of those guys take great pride in blocking for those guys downfield. And that's his attention to detail off the field has really made him so much better on the field. Is Josh a good blocker naturally, or is it something you had to work with him on? How did that process get to where it is now? No lot of receivers are natural good blockers. They're natural good ball catchers. That is a learned skill uh, that we have always taken great pride in. Uh, every unit we've ever coached, uh, we want that to be something we're really, really good at. And we love it when uh, media guys and TV guys and radio guys and when they point it out to our receivers, that goes a long, long way. And we, we celebrate it all the time. We don't show a lot of great catches, but we show a whole lot of great blocks uh, in our video sessions. Hey, JJ, you can wrap us up with Coach here. Jeff, does it mean anything that this game is now uh, considered your conference opener? Obviously, it takes more of importance because it's a conference game, but we don't. We really don't stress the opponent very much. Well, obviously, we've got to scout them, JJ. We've got to know what they do, but we're working on UTSA. I mean, if you watch us play on Saturday, you know we got a lot of stuff to fix, and we got to fix us. And uh, I have enough confidence in our players and our coaching staff that if we'll just take care of us. Uh, we'll start stacking some wins together consistently. But right now, we just, and forever, we just got to keep working on us and one in the day every day. Practice makes permanent. Perfect practice makes perfect. We've got to be champions on the practice field. We got to act like a winner and look like a winner, and eventually we'll become winners. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you guys. All right, thanks, Coach. We'll get Lowell in there. Hello, though. Right here? Yep. Hey, we're just going to go do, do a little camera adjustments real quick. Um, go ahead and give a 10 count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. We'll open it up for questions for Lowell. As soon as that camera is in focus, stand by. All right, JJ, you're up. Hey, Lowell, how's, how's that sound going? Good? How you doing? Well, um, what was it like to get out there and play this past week for you? It was a blessing, man. Um, to be in the situation I'm in and coach still feel like I deserve an opportunity to still play in the office. You know, it was always a blessing. You know, was, I enjoyed myself. It was really exciting. How long have you guys been working on this special package? It's, it's always kind of been one of our things that we say we would kind of do offensively. So I guess since we made the decision of who was going to be the guy and who was going to be offensively. What does it mean you guys ran out the last six minutes of the game clock this past week? What, what does that mean to be able to do that? Um, we have to be great at situation. Uh, any good football team has to be great at situation. And for us to be able to control the tempo of the clock and not put our defense out there, um, to be able to handle those situations, uh, that's going to help us in the long run. What, was it challenging for you to accept this role? Um, I wouldn't say it's challenging, but most of the time, you know, uh, in order for you to be successful in life, you have to train your mind to be stronger with your feelings. So um, anytime you can do that, you know, you'll always be successful. The, the last time we talked, it, we talked with all four of you guys, and it seemed like you guys were pretty close friends off the field. Is, is that still the case after, you know, after all that's said and done? Absolutely. You know, uh, we, we talk with each other always on the sideline, you know, every week and we getting together, you know, uh, spending time with each other. So it's, it's nothing personal. Thanks, Lola. I think a few more guys are going to ask some questions.
Hey, Greg, you're up. Yeah, Lowell, how you doing? I'm great, you so? I'm good, I'm good. I'm wondering, you talked about your package. What makes it effective for you guys offensively? What, how, does it, how does it function or what makes it work as well as it did against Stephen F. Austin? Um, the ability to, to have you to prepare for me and Frank, you know, um, a lot of coaches, you know, I mean, I, I think it's, it's a lot for defense to kind of structure and to kind of wear somebody down and then I come in the game and you just kind of not know what to expect. So I think it give us a, a upper hand offensively. I understand you guys call it the low zone. Uh, who came up with that? What do you think of that nickname? Uh, I think I think it was kind of coach Coach Lonnie always called me low, so I guess it was kind of a, a thing that the coaching staff came up with and uh, something that I kind of embraced. So it's it's pretty cool. Is it hard to go from a role as a starting quarterback to now a role in this special package? How did you take to that mentally? Uh, like I said, man, um, you always have to train you. Know, you your mind to be stronger than your feelings, you know. The natural thing is for you to kind of go in the shell and be like, you know, you wish you should be the guy. And, you know, all you can do is control the things you control. And uh, I wish Frank nothing but the best, you know. I'm his number one supporter, uh, always helping him when he's coming out the field. So, I mean, all I can do is come in there and help the team when I can, so. I think talking to you last year, I remember you spent a lot of your career trying to prove that you could be a passing quarterback and that you have that skills. Do you think you'll be able to show some of that off within this package? Do you think we'll see that through the year? Um, we, we're going to kind of mix it up a, a bit, um, just kind of keep defenses up balance. So you'll be able to see a bit of everything this year. Hey, Hector, you're up. Morning, Lowell. Morning. You, you just mentioned um, being Frank's biggest supporter a little while ago when he talked to us. He talked about how key you guys are um, in kind of helping him assess what goes on within within the game. Um, can you speak to that? That I know you touched on the relationship and how it's all good, but that role and that specific uh, thing, Lowell, just kind of looking at things and saying, hey, man, I don't know if you saw that, but this is happening, that's happening, that dynamic that you and, Ham, have, you and Frank have in game. Um, well, just, just me being able to have another eye for him, just kind of seeing some things that he might um, not see during the game, you know, because – Obviously, the game moves a lot faster than it is for me, you know, because I'm not the one actually out there. So I'm actually able to kind of uh, analyze and examine things and help him to kind of look out for certain things that we might come back to later in the game. So I think it's always a blessing for him to have me, who played a lot last year, Josh, who's, who's been in different places and played a lot, and JoJo, who's, who's played some last year too. So for him to have us three around him and kind of give him uh, some little nuggets for him to go out there and play with us, it, uh, it's a great advantage for him. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, Hey, Greg. Well, overall, how has this week of uh, practice and preparation been different, given that it's a short week, you're playing on Friday, and it, it's a new opponent that just got announced over the weekend? Uh, we just kind of been taking everything uh, as it is. Uh, obviously, we, ne we, got, we haven't had much time as we would normally do uh, for our preparation and, and things, but uh, it's, it, we, we just kind of, you know, 2020 has been a crazy year as it's been, so for us to kind of being able to prepare for a game on Friday is, um, is nothing that we can't handle. Is it a strange dynamic to go from being in the non-conference season to suddenly this is your conference opener a little earlier than expected, or what is that like? Um, all we can do is prepare for what we're going to play. Like I said, 2020 has been a crazy year. So um, being that we've seen all the things that's going on in Memphis and a lot of those other schools across the nation for us to be able to still play ball, is, you know, uh, that's the only thing we're really concerned about. So. Always, we were playing on Saturday and keeping our bubble in our bubble, you know, real fine with everything else. Got it. Thanks, Law. All right, thanks, Law. We'll get Josh Otis in there next. Thanks, Law. I'm just going to do a little camera distance. Uh, go ahead and do a 10 count for me. Got 
10 to 10 real quick? And then also, could you step back a little bit? Have the 10, please. Have the what? Have the 10. Josh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, down or come up? Either word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, Kyle, does that sound good? Yep. All right, okay. uh, we'll, take, we'll take questions for Josh Otis. JJ, you're up first. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Oh, well, not too bad. Uh, how was our practice today? That was good. We uh, got some good, some good work in. What's it been like trying to prepare for this uh, new team this week? It's been, it's been like any other week. We have a new opponent. We go ahead and uh, have a game plan, and we go out every day and try to execute what we have for that day. How would you say you guys played this past week? Uh, we weren't really happy about uh, what we could have done and we should have done. We could have did a lot better in certain areas. But we've gone in and taken that criticism and improved on that stuff during practice this week. What was it like for you to get that start? It was great. It was uh, great to be able to go out and uh, positively affect the game uh, and be part of the, the team, per se, that helps help us win. What did you do to, to earn that role? I just put my nose to the grass and I worked hard every day. And uh, eventually the, the opportunity came up and I, I took grasp of it. What, what, what does it mean for you to be able to, to play this role? You've been here several years now, and, and now it seems like you have an opportunity to really impact the game. It means a lot. Uh, I, does it, to me, it would never really matter if I played or if I sat the bench, as long as the team won what was best for the team. That's what I wanted to do. Thanks, Josh. A few guys are going to ask some more questions. Thank you. Hey, Greg, you're up. Josh, were you happy with sort of what you brought to the left tackle position? What makes you uh, a good fit there, and how do you handle that role? Uh, I was happy I was able to, to, to do something for the team, to do something positive. Uh, I just, they asked me to do something, and I do it to my best effort. And uh, just talking with the guys, communicating, just, it's not just me, it's really just the whole line that, that really helped me out. I know you mentioned there's a couple of areas you guys are trying to clean up up front. What are some of those things you've been working on this week? We didn't run the ball to the best of our ability last week. We, we thought we could do a lot better. So this week, that's what we focused on doing that, cleaning back up, going back to the basics, going back to our, our first step, couple steps, and uh, just, just really trying to focus on that. Did you come into this season expecting that you'd be in the mix for a starting role, or how were you approaching it? I was approaching it just like any other season. It's, it's, it doesn't matter if it's a new coach, a new season. Just go and work hard at what you your craft. Go and do what you need to do. When did you sort of earn that? When did that get get settled in practice? Because I know you didn't play in week one. How did that How did that process shake out? Um, just really, just uh, I really don't remember. It was just practicing, and one day they said, "Hey, Josh, can you do this for us?" And I said, "I'll try my best," and that ended up being the results. Was there an injury situation or something that kept you out the opening week, or what happened there? Uh, no, actually, I did play some the opening week. I did. I played against Texas State. But then I guess just probably in the week of practice, you expanded into a, into a bigger role at left tackle, or how did that how did that sort of develop from one week to the next? Uh, yeah, pretty much just um, we, we were trying to get a, get a good feel for our, our line and just moving it in, in and out a lot of guys. and. Just opportunity came up and I took it. I know JJ asked you about kind of coming through a couple of years here and earning this opportunity now. What was the biggest challenge that you faced along the way or the hardest the hardest part about getting to this point? Uh, probably the biggest challenge is coming in every day and just uh, working hard and really not you don't you don't get the the, no, the notice that you think people will notice you and stuff like that. But just keep pushing through and keep working uh, at your craft and so one day people will notice. All right, Hector, you're up. Morning, Josh. How are you? Morning. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Uh, hey, since you've been around a, a, a couple of years, wanted to ask this, um, and I don't know if it's an easy uh, question to answer, but uh, Frank Harris, in terms of what you've noticed from Frank the last couple of years, and I know there hasn't been a big sample size because of the injuries, right? But from what you've been able to tell, or has it been uh, kind of obviously able to tell, differences in his game 
whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whatever he's doing out there, uh, just want to get your perspective, being a guy who's, who's there up in front of him, of how his game has changed over the years, if it has. I don't believe this changed. Frank has always been Frank. He's always been high energy. He's always brought something to the team, whether it be on the sideline or whether it be in the game. He's always, he's always been Frank. He's been that guy. With the amount of offense you guys have, have racked up yardage-wise these, these first couple of weeks, um, how much of that does he make go? I mean, obviously, I know he's a quarterback, but in terms of, you know, what he's reading and, 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 and the decisions that he makes back there, can you speak to how much maybe, you know, kind of starts with him when you guys are ripping off those big plays? Uh, to be honest, he's, he's behind me, so I really don't know. We all, I just know that we all work together as a team. He brings us together as a team, and uh, if we're down or if we're up too high, he brings us back, back down to the level. If we're down, he brings us up, back up, say, hey, let's go, guys. It's really just a team effort. Appreciate it, Josh. Thank you, man. No okay, anything else for Josh? All right, appreciate it. That's Thank all, you, Josh. That's all, that's all we come by today. So uh, I'll, I'll touch base with you, Greg and JJ. Hang on.